There's a pretty good load there already, Aaron. Aye. Move over, Steve Keys. Hey, Who have you been to see, dog, eh? Yeah? The new folks. Their name is Gelder. Gelder? <laughs> That's not a Scotch name by my reckoning. No. It's a Dutch name. You don't see. Well, well, that makes all the free Dutch families hereabouts. <laughs> this settlement's getting to be so us Cape Breton Scotch are practically overrun by you Dutchies. <laughs> I'm a Dutch-Canadian. What are you? We're Scotch-Canadians, I guess. They're Jim Mackenzie's grandsons, Doc. So? So? Their mother just died somewhere out west. She was never very strong, and I, I guess things must have been kind of hard for her since a man was killed. You'll mind about that, Doc. Jim's son, the boy's father, being killed in the Boer War. I... <clears throat> well, now, Jim and his old woman sent for them, and... <laughs> dang me if they haven't travelled across half a Canada, ticketed and labelled like my regular packages. David Mackenzie. We call him Davy. Harry. And... Davy Mackenzie. <laughs> dog at the farm. We're going to stay at a farm, a real farm, with horses and cows and pigs and sheep. There'll be dogs, won't there, Harry? Oh, sure there'll be dogs. And puppies, too. Tell about where there'll be puppies, Harry. He's crazy for dogs. That's all right. I, I like dogs, too. Well, our puppies, we'll maybe get one to be our own. When we get, get one, we're going to call it, what are we going to call it, Harry? Rover. Rover. It's going to be all right living there at the farm. You mustn't expect too much. But you will like your aunt, Kirsty. I think you will like her very much. She's a good woman. Ah, yes. Kirsty's a good woman, right enough. And she might make a good woman to some man, if ever she had the chance. But she's never had the might of a chance. The old man's seen to that. Did you ever patch up that quarrel you had with Jim Mackenzie, Dom? It takes two to quarrel, Aaron. There was no quarrel. Oh, well, no, I heard there was. Him calling you a boor and saying that your friend Hoof was stealing his land, his hill. There was no quarrel.
bet you, Jim. I've been making friends with your grandsons. Now, there's no use to be angry, Jim. I know you think he's a boor and all that. I'm James McKenzie. This all your gear. Yes, Granddaddy, the bag and the parcel. Fine lads, Jim. That young one's the dead spit of your Alec. They're both Mackenzies. I'd thank you, Andrew, to leave my son's name out of it. Can you walk? Oh, I mean, can he walk a distance? Oh, yes, he can walk for miles. Have you ate? Yes, Granddaddy. Have you watered? Yes. What about him? He's a water too. Morning, Tom. Morning, Jim. Any news yet? Haven't heard a thing, Jim. It's like I told you. Them lawyer billies are apt to be kind of cagey when it comes to such like things as title deeds. They can recognize theft when they see it, can't they? I understand your feelings, Jim. But it don't do any good to dig up an attitude like that. You'll let me know when you hear from the lawyers. You can rest on that. As soon as I hear, I'll send over to your place. Well, Granddaddy. For thrift. There's nobody in the settlement has a pair of boots to equal them. Your father gave me these boots. It was wrong of him to do so. Why was it wrong of him, Granddaddy? Because he could not afford them. Your father sent me these boots when he left his home. I never wore them until after I heard he was dead. Until after the Boers had killed him, do you understand? Yes, I bet you got horses, look. No. No horses? No horses. Cows, look. No, no cows. I got goats. How many? Three. I got two fields. I bet they're pretty big ones. Oh, well, they're big enough for hereabouts. One of them's in oats. I got a barn. And a woodshed. I got a puckle hens. How many? Seventeen and a rooster. Is he a big red rooster? No, he's purely black. I bet he can crawl, though. Ah, you don't judge a man by his worldly possessions. I'd rather walk in the fear of God than own a thousand head of cattle. You see over there, under the trees? You see the smoke rising? That's my place. Them, 
You've really got them, Father. Sally, that's your Aunt Kirsty. Mother! Mother, it's them right enough. The boys are here. How often has your father told you not to show Kirsty? I'm not deaf, do you think? Well, you must be tired and hungry, I warrant. Come away in now. And Kirsty will take you to the water shelf while I get the victuals. You're like my mummy, Aunt Kirsty. Oh, no. Yes, you are, didn't she, Harry? No, your mother was beautiful. Can I have the towel, Aunt Kirsty? When we was coming to the postman, there was a ball along of us in the car. And who might that have been? It was a doctor. And what was he saying? You'd never have known he was different from anybody else, hardly. We never even knowed he was a bull. Did he say anything about me? He said you'd like you. Did he say that truly? Yes, he said you'd like to rank thirsty. Did he say anything else? About me? Try to mind, Harry. No, he didn't say anything else. You're ready. It's time to eat. We shall pray. Lord. David. O oh Lord, we thank thee humbly and from our hearts for thine infinite mercy towards us and for the food which we will now eat. Amen. Amen. Did you see the Domini, Jim? Aye, they're to start at school Monday next. After we've ate, can you see the farm, Granddaddy? It'll be too dark. And anyway, it's your bedtime. You must be tired out. I'm not tired. Me neither. Well, it's your beds for you now. Will we get a story before we go to our beds? My mamma used always to read us a story, didn't she, Dave? We haven't a storybook in the house. There's the Pilgrim's Progress. Oh, that's too old for them, Mother. Has it pictures? There are no books with pictures in this house, and there shall be none. You know, Father, nowadays there are some quite respectable books, even religious books with pictures. There'll be no pictures in this house. Grandma, when Granddaddy went out, why did he take his gun with him? Sure, I don't know. Is he going to shoot anybody? No, of course not. Grandma, are you awful poor? It's a poor country, Davy. When we came here first, there wasn't any other growing thing but trees. Your granddaddy cleared all this land. And your own daddy helped him a while before he went away. But it's poor hard working land that don't run to extras. Grandma, I don't think my granddaddy maybe likes me. That's a terrible thing to see, Davy. Whatever makes you see a thing like that? Because he calls me David. <laughs> Where's Kirsty? Out walking, I fancy. There's no restfulness in her nowadays. You worrying about the hills, Jim? No, I have nothing to worry about. The hill's mine. The law is bound to uphold me. No, I was thinking about the boys. Ach, they're brawl lads, Jim. Aye, they're all right, but I couldn't think of anything to say to them.
Tell your granddaddy you was there. Now mind me, the both of you, you're never to go on the hill again. There's no knowing what might have happened if your granddaddy had seen you moving on the hill. You mean he might have shot us? I mean nothing of the sort. Now go to the spring and get cleaned up before breakfast. Kirsty. Hello, Mr. Cameron. Where's your father? I think he's in the woodshed. Harry. Harry, run as fast as you can to the house. Tell your grandma that Tom Cameron and Hooft are on their way. Hooft, remember that, Harry. And don't let them see you. Go around the back way. Now run, Harry, run. Not you, Davy. You're to stay here with me. You stay here while I break the news to Good day, Jim. Hi, Tom. No use beating about the bush, Jim. I've heard from the lawyers. You're not going to like it. Here's the letter. Well, what does it say? The title papers are in order. Hoof's registered the hill, all right. That land is mine. It's always belonged to me. You didn't register it, and you didn't enclose it. Now, listen, Jim. Hoof's a reasonable enough sort of fellow, in spite of what you think. He's a boor. He's a Dutchman, Jim. He's no more of a boor than you are. He's a boor. He's out to steal my land. The law says it's his. Then I don't hold with the law. I'll deal with this in my own way. Now, listen, Jim. As well as being your friend, I'm a justice of the peace. I've heard tell you was keeping hoofed off the hill with your rifle. Aye, and I'll continue to do so. Jim, what's hoofed doing here? Hoofed? Aye, he's doing by the barn there. Listen, Jim, I brought hoofed here to talk things over. Get on your horse, hoofed. Now, steady, Jim. Let's all talk things over reasonably. You heard what I said, get moving. And remember this, if you trespass on my land again, you'll not leave it alive. I came here to talk, but it is no good to talk to a man like you. All I have to say is this. I work my hill in the spring. It's my hill. And if you set a foot on it, I'll kill you.
We'll wait. It's a great thing to be going to the school. I never had the chance to see that you make the most of it. Did you never go to school, Granddaddy? Well, I was the eldest and my father needed me. I was doing a man's work, a full day's work in my father's croft when I was your age. That was over the sea. Is that right, Granddaddy? Long ago in Scotland? Aye, long years ago. And is your father still over the sea, Granddaddy? Oh, he's dead. He died of hard work and disappointment. He wasn't educated, you see, no more than me. But you can read, Granddaddy. Well, I have not the full power of reading. I can only read bits from the Bible. We'll go in now. Your grandma can read. There's no thing like education. You remember that. Class stand. Good morning to you, Jim. These are your grandsons, eh? Aye, that they be, Harry and David. Harry is eight years of age and David is five. David has never been to school before. You'll make due allowance, I suppose, the first day or two. They must be brought to discipline. Broken in, Jim. They can't be allowed to interfere with the progress of the other pupils. Ah, well, I can understand that, but David is newly five. You'll break him in gently, I'd fancy. I'm never harsh, Jim. Just that. That's it. You have been to school before, Harry Mackenzie. Uh, where was this school? Winnipeg, sir. Winnipeg, Manitoba. Mm -hmm. Well, now let's see what you know. What is the chief end of man? Tell him, class. Man's chief end is, is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. What rule hath God given to direct us how we may glorify and enjoy him forever? I don't know. You don't know, but, but it's the catechism, boy. If you don't know the catechism, what do you know? He knows reading and writing. He can write better than all my granddaddy, and he can read and hear anything, Harry God. Silence. I asked Harry, not you. In the school, you speak when you're spoken to. I shall return to you later, Harry Mackenzie. In the meantime, Sit there, at the foot of the class, and uh, you sit next to him. Class, take out your royal readers. But first of all, tell Harry Mackenzie the rule that God hath given to direct us how we may glorify and enjoy him forever. <coughs> the word of God, which is contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments, is the only rule to direct us how we may glorify and enjoy him. What did you say your name was? I didn't say. I've got an apple. Want a bite? Go on, you can have a bite. Fighting with the new it boy? Harry McKenzie's boat. He started it. Harry McKenzie's boat. I don't want to hear any tales. Now, you should have known better, Jan Hoop. Maybe the new boys didn't know that I don't allow fighting in the playground. Well, they know now. Now, shake hands and have done with it. I won't shake hands. Shake hands, I say. I won't shake hands with no boar. The boars killed my father, and his father stole my granddaddy's land. You're a liar. My father... Stop it, stop it. My father never stole anything. Silence, boys. 
I'm ashamed of both of you, and you especially, Harry Mackenzie. Jan Hooft is a Canadian, and the law has decided that the land belongs to Jan Hooft's father. Now let's have no more of this sinful nonsense. Shake hands like true Christians. I'll not shake hands with him. You're opposing your will to mine, boy. And that is not only pig-headedness, it is mortal disobedience. And if you persist in it, I've got no choice but to beat you. I'll never shake hands with him. I'll do it for him. Come on. The boys, Jim, they've been at the school a week now, and they're fair worn out. Harry will settle down, but you were quite right about Davy. All that walking, it's too much for him. Has he been complaining? He has another sense yet. He'd walkly dropped. But I think we should keep him at home. At least till he's six. Oh, I do that, woman. He'd be awful disappointed. I'll find him some jobs to keep him from fretting. It's right and proper that Harry should learn to work too. By the time I was Harry's age, I was doing near a grown man's work. Times has changed, Jim. Nonetheless, I shall set them a task. It's only fitting that they should learn to work. What ails you, Davy? Grandma, why won't Granddaddy let me go to school again? told you, Davy, because you're not old enough. Now, why don't you go and do something? Go and see the goats. Granddaddy said no. Said I went to go near them again. You oughtn't to have chased them, you know, Davy. Play with the hens, then. Hens won't play. A dog could play. Oh, aye. A dog could play. Bet you a dog could play better than anything. David, going to see you. No, Harry. Sure? Well, remember, nobody's got to know about this hut. It's secret. I've got something to show you. Come on in. There. Mats. No. Dogs. They're Irish setter dogs and mighty rare. Anybody wants them, you can have them for $13.50. Is $13.50 a lot of money, Harry? Ah, oh, yes. I'm the car man rover. What are you going to call yours, Dave? I'm the car man rover, too. It was Anna Jameson gave me it. He's allowed books with pictures in his house, same as we used to be. Remember, Dave? I think I do, Harry. Know where I'm going to hide the picture, Dave? No, Harry. In my granddaddy's boots. In his best boots? In his best boots. Death the old trade. We'll ask him now. When I see Harry, just say you want a dog. Go on, there's nothing to be scared of. If he won't let us get a dog, try him for some other kind of creature. What other kind of creature? Any kind. Hurry up. Wants a dog. What do you want a dog for? A dog is no use. You can't eat a dog. Well, let's see what could he say. He said no. He said you can't eat a dog. Davy wants you. 
He's coming, Grandma. Mind you don't splash your granddaddy's boots. Grandma, I don't think granddaddy's going to ever let us get a dog. Grandma, I don't like my granddaddy. Oh, hush now, that's a terrible thing to say. Everybody likes their granddaddy. No, Alex Stewart has a granddaddy He's on his side. He's on his side? He's on his side. Alex Stewart's granddaddy is. Your granddaddy does not always understand young'uns. And you're too small a young'un to understand granddaddies. Now stand up and get dry before I lose patience. Oh. Grandma, if we had a little white ratting dog, it wouldn't eat but rat. And it could have a wee end off of my ration on a Sunday. Move over in the bed now and leave his room for Harry. Stop all this gabbing and get to sleep. I'll leave the candle till Harry comes. All right, Grandma. Right. You never can tell. You might get a dog someday, Dave. I get to sleep. That dog. The dog that Davy wants. I said no, and I mean no. It's good for their characters to go without. You can't knock man's size sins out of boys as hasn't yet growed up to them. Your own son's sons, and you are denying them and driving them the same wrong road. It's God's road. It's a fool's road, James Mackenzie, and it ends in tears. You washed, Harry? Yes, Grandma. Then away to bed. Say good night to Granddaddy. Good night, Granddaddy. Good night, Harry. Where are you going, Father? To the hill. Don't take your rifle with you. Please, Father. What's come over you, girl? Are you out of your mind? Small wonder if I was. I don't know what's got into Kirsty. I don't understand her. She saw somebody on the hill today. Again. I haven't a heart to. I suppose if we did get a dog, my granddaddy would only eat it. Would he eat it, skin and all? Or eat what? Eat the dog. I don't reckon my granddaddy is truly a dog eater. Good night. You don't reckon he would truly eat a dog? Not a whole one. Now shut up and go to sleep. All right, Harry. Good night. Hmm? 
No, but it makes me awful sad to look at it. Now we will give you a nice clean bandage just to last you until we get you safely home. Huh? with Davy. He's, uh, he's lost a little blood, but it looks worse than it is. Doctor, where's your father, Kirsty? It's all right, Mother. He's up at the field. Is it bad? No, no, no. It's a clean wound. Well, I'm sure we're much obliged to you, Doctor. But if my man catches you here, there's no knowing what he might do. I can walk. Well, you're not going to walk. No, no, no. Not, not for two, three days. Away you go now, Doctor, before there's more trouble on all our heads. you go now. Don't go over the hill, Willem. My father keeps watching it, and he's liable to shoot anything he sees on the hill. Hmm. Please, Willem. All right. I'll go, and I won't cross over the hill. Are you going to the Mackay's anniversary on Saturday night? I hear they're getting a special fiddler up. They'll be dancing, then? Yes. Do you good to go. Meet some young people for a change. Will you be there, Willem? Yes, I expect so. We don't hold with dancing. My father would never let me go. I'll be at the church service, though. I shall be there, too. Kirsty, come this minute. Goodbye, Kirsty. Goodbye, Willem. Claire, you're mooning around like a young girl, Kirsty. Is that kettle boiling yet? No, Mother. Mama, why is the doctor our enemy? Lie at peace now. He's not an enemy, Davy. He's a boor. He's just a poor Dutchman. Is that so, Davy? A wee bit so. Hurry up with that kettle, Kirsty. It's not on the boil yet, Mother. Granddaddy says he's a boor. Hold your tongue, Harry, and get out of my way. Granddaddy says he is a boor. No, Harry, no. Willem Bloom is... is just a man. Oh, what a sight I was. Hold your tongue, Harry. I want the doctor to look at Davy's knee, and there's an end to it. But my knee's better than Kirsty. You can never tell, and it does no harm to make sure. And Harry, you're not to talk like that. Willem Bloom is a Dutchman, a good man, and a clever doctor. I'm not coming in, Kirsty. I'll wait for you. Well, well, mind you do, Harry. Come on, Davy. I don't know.
be. Rosa, Rosa! Now, don't bring it in here. Rosa! No, I call him Peter. What are you doing here, Davy? Down, Peter. I trust they brought me. Hello, Kirsty. I was just passing and I thought I'd bring Davy in so you could look at his knee, in case... Well, then I must look at his knee, of course. You can never tell with wounds. I think it was very wise of you to bring him. Davy! Oh, uh... <laughs> now, let me see your knee. Mm-hmm. Is it sore? No. Well, I think we might say it is uh, improving. Okay, then. And now, Kirsty, I will make you a cup of tea. That is, if I can. No, Willem. Let me do it. You sit down. <laughs> You haven't even seen my new barn, have you? Oh, no, of course not. You haven't been here for two, three years. Not since... Go on. Say it. Not since my brother was killed in the war. I was sorry about that, Kirsty. Truly. I knew you were. Will and will it ever end, all this hating? Indeed it will. Time heals these souls. Your father will get over it. But will I? Will I get over it? Of course you will. You have your life before you. That's not true. Do you know how old I am? You are a young woman, Kirsty. You always say that. As if you were an old man and I was a girl in my teens. Kirsty. There is something maybe I should have told you before. I was married once upon a time. In Holland. I thought you were. It was not a success. I was not happy in marriage. And in medicine in Holland, I was not happy either. I was a failure in both these things. I'm still a failure. And now I'm an old man as well. You're not a failure. And you're not an old man. You're not, you're not. Kirsty, Kirsty. You'll never be an old man to me, Willem. You don't care, do you? You've never cared. Thank you for looking at his knee. I believe you're an old man. <laughs> you better get moving, young man. If your Aunt Kirsty is still going at the speed she left here, she'll be halfway home by now. Now, come along. Let me see how fast you can run on that wounded leg of yours. I can run as fast as a horse. <laughs> well, off you go, then. <laughs> Oi! When your dog has puppies, can I have one, maybe? I'm afraid not, Davy. He's a male dog. He's not the kind that has puppies. I'm sorry. Bye, Davy. Goodbye. <laughs> 
between us. Guess I never had a bullet near to me and all that. Me neither. And I got to go back. Sure as fate, you'll pick me off as I start going back down the hill. Come down our side. It's safe enough. My father don't shoot. Come on. You can work your way around the side of the hill. He's a mighty good shot, isn't he? Sure is. Guess he could hit a court at 20 paces. Well, so long, Harry. So long, Jan. top of the hill, there was no sign of him. He's home, Jim. Where is he? At the water shelf. Get to the woodshed. you do something, Mother? No. Harry was in the wrong. Father was in the wrong. If it hadn't been for Father... Hold your tongue, Kirsty. don't know what you're thinking of to speak like that. In front of Davy, too. I tell you, Harry was in the wrong. I told him he was not to go on the hill. You heard me, Davy. I told you both you were never to go on that hill. Yes, Grandma. He was in the wrong, Harry was. Can't bear it. Can't bear it, Mother. <coughs> There now, Davy. It's all over now. You'd have forgotten all about it in a day or two. Daddy down at the swamp with his boots not on. Where's Jim Mackenzie? He's maybe fixing the fence up by the oats. Run down and tell Granddaddy he's at the swamp. Thank you. 
successful one. Where are they now? Up by the woods. There was guns, Granddaddy. Guns stuck on the horse's neck. Here are your boats, Jim. There was five of them. One of them was Andrew McLeod. Did you see anything? No, they just said they wanted you. Your boots, Jim. Oh, never mind them, woman. Was the horses sweating? Aye, I might. Is it trouble, Mother? I don't know. I reckon it's nothing serious. Just the same, I wish he hadn't taken his rifle. He takes it with him everywhere. Can you finish the logs yourself, Kirsty? I suppose so. Is my granddaddy going to be killing the horses too? Your granddaddy's not going to be killing anything. The idea. You bide by the house now. Horses five horses, Harry, and guns, guns, Harry, and men riding fast. That's nothing. Come up here. They went glumping up the oats, and my granddaddy went after them. One of the horses were white, Harry. Never mind with the horses, Dave. Listen, will you? This is important. I got something mighty special. Do you want to know what I got? Go on, ask me. What you got, Harry? <laughs> Where'd you get it, Harry? Found it. I didn't know you found Barbies, Harry. Well, I found this one all right. It was lying its belly under a tree. <laughs> Wasn't nobody about. Not a soul. I looked everywhere. And is it really our Bobby now, Harry? It's mine. But you can have a loan of it while I have other business. You can feel it. Go on, feel it if you crave to. Hello, Bobby. Can it speak, Harry? Ain't exactly, Gabby. Is it newborn, maybe? No, no, it's getting on. Listen, Dave, I aim to go up and tap the goat before Grandma She gets there. And you bide, see, and mind the baby. If it hollers, sing to it. Okay, Harry. <laughs> Hello, Bobby. What's your name, Bobby? Plenty for joy. <sighs> Got some good fat on your Bobby. Tomorrow, Bobby, I'll cut your hunk off the old hog. That's better than a root. You've got to wait its whistle near every hour of the day. Look now, you get up for your rations in case Grandma comes searching for you. I'll be up soon. 
I've got to wash up the baby and do its chores. Then you'll take it up the house? No, no, I am to keep it in the hut. Nobody but you and me are to know of this baby. It's ours. How are we going to keep it forever? I don't know. We'll keep it for a year or two anyways, till it's got a mind of its own. And then, if it wants to hit the trail, won't be no stopping it. Now, go on, Dave. Off home. All right, Harry. Goodbye, Bobby. <coughs> See you in the morning. Grandma, when I was a baby, did I have a thirst? You did. All babies has. Why? Why? Because it's the way they're made, that's why. A baby, when it's wee, can't take solid food in its gut no more, nor a cat, nor any other young creature. A baby's better nor a cat, nor a dog neither. Granted. Now say your prayers. You washed, Harry? Yes, Grandma. Now say your prayers. Good, Davy. Good night. Good night, Grandma. Settled on a name yet? We could call it Rover. No, no. Rover's a good name, Harry. Rover's a dog's name. It's a good name for a dog, but not a baby. I don't know what to call it. Edward. Edward's a good name too, but I like Rover best. I tell you, it ain't fitting. And whose baby is this baby anyhow? It's your baby, Harry. Well, I am to call my baby Edward after the king, and that's now its name. And we'll have no more arguably out of you, Dave. That is, if you want to keep friendly with me and my baby. I think Edward's an extra good name, Harry. Honest. Psst, that's Granddaddy coming in. Where's Kirsty? I think she's out walking. Walking and walking. She's forever walking. Woman shouldn't be walking by herself at night. It's not natural. Cast has never been a natural woman, Jim. We've seen to that. Harry, how did you know about waiting the baby's whistle? I remember my mama with you. At times I did to myself. That's him getting to bed. I don't remember her. I'm always telling you. I told you last night. Anyway, you remember most of it yourself. I know, but I like to hear you tell. Tell me about Mama singing to me. I'll tell you tomorrow. Do you think he's in bed yet? That was him. Ah, oh, he's in bed now. What the body? Somebody's got to bite the baby. Somebody's got to keep it warm and give it its drink and protect it from the wolves and all that. I'll be back before they're up in the morning. Water. Pure water, mind. Okay, Harry.
You, get Harry. Now you stand for judgment. Have you ought to say? The boy has sinned doubly. He was absent two days. I'll need to thrash him, Jim. Ah, you'll need to thrash him, John. That's fair and fitting since you're his dominie. But you'll thrash him in the school's time, I say, and not in mine. I came as friend, Jim. Ah, and you can go as friend, John, if you so please. You spoke as dominie. A man sends his children to school. The dominie has the use of that children in school time. But when the school is out, a man has the use of his own children and his children's children. And on my land and in my time, no man thrashes mine but me. Harry, to the woodshed. David, go and get your rations. What ails you? I never called you yet. Nothing, Grandma. He doesn't look well. Have you a pain, Davy? That was John McIver, the dominie. Aye, Kirsty was telling me. What was he after, Jim? He came by with a search party. They're searching the upper wood. And he stopped by to query for Harry. Have they found anything yet? I was telling your mother about Harry. Harry's been juke in the school. John McIver informs me he's been absent two days, say. But where is Harry? In the woodshed. Have you beat him? No, that's for the dominie. I've asked Harry where he's been and what he's been doing and he doesn't aim to tell me he defies me. And so I've put him in the woodshed. And there he'll bide until he sees the error of his ways. But there's nowhere for him to sleep in the woodshed. That's his affair. He's only to tell me the answers to my questions and I'll let him out. It's dark in there. He's only a bairn, Jim. It's cruelty, Father. Are you taking it upon yourself to go against my judgment? I am. You can't do it, Father. Leave the room, girl. Now, Jim... Hold your tongue, woman. Am I to be challenged on my every act in my own house? You may get down, Davy. I don't think you should keep Harry in that woodshed all night. I've said he'll bide in the woodshed and bide he will. Did you think on the book, Jim? The book says there can be no righteousness without mercy. Is it time to think it over now? And I'm sure that if you go to him again, like as not, he'll tell you all about it. I didn't glower at me, Jim. Give him another chance. Go on now. Out shall go to him. Is that you, Kirsty? Who's that? Good evening, Jim. Father, let me explain. So it's you, Bloom. 
You steal my land, you kill my son, and now you're after my daughter. No, Father, no, Willem's never even looked at me. Never would. Kirsty. I wish he had. Take warning, Bloom, and give thanks to your maker that I don't have my gun. This is the last time you'll come sneaking onto my land. But he only came to see if we had any news, and to tell us that they're going to search the hill. Aye, that would be his excuse, but I understand him better. I've seen you, Bloom. I've seen you watching us. Father! How could you shame me? How could you, Father, in front of Willem? Kirsty, you have nothing to be ashamed of. If she has nothing to be ashamed of, Bloom, I'm sure it's small thanks to you. Father! What have you done, Jim? What have you done? I'll tell you what he has done. He has driven his daughter away. And he has driven me to look into my heart and see the truth. I always thought that Kirsty was sorry for me. I reckoned I was too old for her. I did not see that she has need of me. Greater need, perhaps, than I have of her. She will never come back to you, Jim. I shall find her, and I shall keep her. I tell you, Bloom, be quiet, Jim. You have said enough for one night. <laughs> Get down there. First thing is to give baby a drink and then change it. You know, like I done. Can you do that, Dave? I don't know. And then see it's warm and tucked low in its nest, and you can top it up with that rug of grandma's. Go on. Bairn, the hoof bairn. Please, please don't eat it. Nobody going to eat it, not to harm a hair of its might head. Your granddad is giving it back to its rightful owners, and that's all. But it's mine, it's mine and Harry's. Oh, hush, no. It's the hoofed baby, it must be. It's been lost two days. And all the folk in the settlement searching, and its mama and dad are near demented. 
Come with me back to bed now. Going to your bed. What's your baby, Grandma? Your granddaddy's taking it back to the hoofs where it belongs. Now get moving, Harry. My granddaddy said. I don't care what your granddaddy says, you're to mind me. And I say you're to sleep in your bed, and that's that. Mrs. Mackenzie. Andrew McLeod. What are you after at this time of night? I've got bad news for you. Is it Jim? Kirsty? Aye, uh, it's Kirsty. Did? No, not that. There's been an accident. She ran right into us. Where is she? Man, you must be told. He knows, mistress. He was with us. He's gone for the doctor. He shouldn't be long. He's got Alex Mayer. There's another thing. I'm sorry, Mistress Mackenzie. We've come for the boy. The boy? boy that kidnapped the hoof baby. Harry, mistress. Aye, ah, that's it. Harry. We was coming for him, you see, when we ran her down. It was my horse, mistress Mackenzie. But I swear it was not my blame. She ran right into us. Aye. Where is the boy? You mean you, you're going to take him? We have to. It's the law. No need for us all in here. Now remember, Harry, you come to no harm so long as you put your trust in God. Here's your cap. Now act like a man. Take good care of him. He'll be all right along of us, ma'am. Good night, Mrs. Mackenzie. Sorry about all this. Good night.
she's sleeping now. She's going to get better. She needs peace and quiet. I shall be back later. Is there nothing I can do? Just see that she has peace. Don't worry. What I said I meant. She's not fit to be moved. When she is, I shall move her. Davy, what are you doing out of bed already? I never wake you yet. Grandma, is Auntie Kirsty dead? Of course not. She had an accident. I know, the horse has knocked her down. Is she going to die? No, thank God, Davy. She's going to get better, and we give thanks to God for it. Amen to that. Go away and get dressed now. And no noise. Clark will read the charge. <clears throat> Harry Mackenzie, minor, sometime residing with James Mackenzie, and at present a prisoner in the custody of this court. You are indicted at the instance of Moses Livingston, His Majesty's advocate in Bedeck, and the charge against you is that you did, on the 21st of September, 1904, kidnap the same Margaret Hooft, infant daughter of Jan Hooft, and that you did take her to a hut in the woods and did unlawfully keep her there. Accused? Do you plead guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Got anything else to say before I pass sentence? The Lord have mercy on me. I'm eight years old and a sinner, but I aimed at no harm. You understand this is your defense? That all you got to say? Yes, mister. You will call the court, sir. Yes, mister. Seems to me there's a thing to be established here before I uh, come to my decision, as you might say. And that is this. Did you, Harry Mackenzie, in kidnapping this child, act with malice aforethought? Answer me that. He means, did you know you were doing harm, boy? And did you mean to do it? That's it. There's been a deal of talk in the settlement about this case, what with the bad feeling between the two families and all that. I even heard tell this boy was fighting with young Hooft at school. At his throat, I heard. Is that true, Harry Mackenzie? Yes, sir. Now, what are you saying, yes, sir, too? Is it true you meant harm to the Hoofs when you stole the baby? No, sir. I never even knew it was a Hoof baby. It's true about the fighting. You knew your grandfather was enemies of the Hoofts? You'll not deny that. No, sir. You knew your grandfather hated the hoofs? Yes, sir. And you hated the hoofs? No, sir. I liked them all right. Yet you fought with young Hooft at school and wouldn't shake hands with him. Is that right? Yes, sir. You said you didn't think it was the hoofs' baby. If you didn't think it was the hoofs' baby, whose baby did you think it was? I never thought it was anybody's baby. I thought I just found it. Young, uh, uh what's her name? Joanna Hooft. Young Joanna Hooft lays the baby down. She's supposed to be minding the baby, and she takes it for a walk, and she leaves it on the edge of the wood, and she goes off to play with some of her friends, and she comes back in half an hour, and the baby's gone. And you came along in that half hour, and uh, found it, as you say. Yes, sir. And I never saw Joanna Hooft or nobody. All right. Sit down. Well, now, this is how it looks to me. First, this female child has not come to a deal of harm. That's right, Jan, isn't it? The baby is not harmed, so far as me and my wife, he can tell. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, we got here a boy that admits to kidnap, and that is a hanging crime, and has caused a deal of worry to Jan Hooft and his missus. That is so. We do not aim to be hanging an eight-year-old boy, and the clerk here says they will not take him upriver in the prison. 
But I hear there is schools for young uns, where they can be teached to be reformed. And it is my opinion we ought to consider the sending of Harry Mackenzie to one of them reformed schools. Does happen anyone in court know aught of them schools? If you send him to a school, Tom, I'll shoot you. Sit down, Jim, and don't interfere with the course of justice. Contempt of court! Shut up, you scribbling Pharisee. As for you, Tom, you know me well. You have my meaning. I want to speak too, Tom. I have no love for James Mackenzie, but I wish to see justice done. Me and my wife, we both wish it. Harry is a good boy. They are both good boys. They are friends of my Jan, and I know it is so. Johanna should not have left the baby. It is the fault of me and my wife to let Johanna have the baby, for she is too young. It was not Harry Mackenzie's fault. Well, now, as we were saying, I take it nobody here knows aught of them schools? I could find out. So you could. So you could. You will notice, Jim, that I did not say we was going to send the boy to a reform school. All I said was, did nobody know aught of them schools so that the court could consider them? Now, it appears to me that the cause of justice would be served if the clerk here was to find out all about them reform schools, and then the court will have the information it needs and can send Harry Mackenzie to a reform school if it thinks fit the next time he appears on a similar charge. Case dismissed. That's all today, folks. Stores now open. Anybody aims to buy. You're let off. Harry, come here. Hello, Harry. Harry, you'll go to Mr. Hooft and you'll say that you're sorry. Hooft, Harry has something to say to you. I'm sorry, Mr. Hooft. I'm truly sorry. I believe you, boy. If there was anyone to blame, it was not only him. It was my daughter. It was Johanna. No. The fault was mine. And it's my duty to apologize. And to thank you for speaking for my boy in the court. I only did what was right. And I thank you for it. You acted with Christian charity. Me and my entire family is obligated to you. And now, Harry, take Davy home. Get straight home, the two of you. And Harry, you'll sit in your chair and wait for me. You hear me, Harry? Yes. Get moving, then. They're coming, Kirsty. Is father with them? No, there's no sign of your father yet. I better get the meat. So you're home. And hungry, I'll be bound. No, I'm not hungry. Not hungry? Well, I know somebody that is. Me neither. I've got a pie. A blueberry pie. I'm not hungry, Grandma. Harry's waiting for my granddaddy. My granddaddy said sit and wait for him. I see. did it. You sold them. You walked through the settlement with your bare feet, Jim. They're clean, leastways they were. My good name rests in God's hands, my pride does not rest in ornaments. 
Harry. Get pen and paper. Sit down and write. Take up the pen and write. Write this. Sir, I here enclose $13.50 for one red setter dog and carriage of same in good condition and oblige yours in good faith, James Mackenzie. Yours in good faith. I reckon we'll call it Rover. Hey, Harry. James Mackenzie. <laughs>